morning everyone so we had a wonderful discussion so i noted down three points from what got discussed mr ragu pille and mr satish penchit and they were inspiring thoughts all of you are sitting cios here the ability of risk taking ability of creative and logical thinking and managing failure these are three major points which came out which we need to understand and manage ourselves now when we say this it's very important for us to also understand that what transformation is all about and i will take you through the journey of discussion of transformation and uh, i invite you to ask questions so first thing i want to take you give you a global picture there is an emergency in the external world everywhere you are finding that our survival is going to be more and more difficult and that is what this is all about we have a corporate emergency a family emergency we all as individuals suffer from these thoughts and most important these emergencies which we are talking there is a bigger emergency going on inside us and let me refer to the third point which i mentioned which was out of the discussion of the earlier uh, discussion and third point which i said was managing failure we need to understand ourselves first how do we manage and in conferences like this you will find enough discussion happening on innovation influence intelligence there will be discussions on performance gaps that means where we are and where we should be and of late last 10 years 12 years we have started talking about opportunity gaps where we say that what are the opportunities we are losing that means where we could be now there are three dimensions i want to put to this and if you see this will go there no it will not be visible okay but it should be okay so if you see at the core it's managing yourself the next circle or the ellipse elliptical you know circle which you see is managing your team and the third one you see is managing your network now all of us want to win is there anybody who will say i don't want to win all of us want to win now winning is or winning compr comprises of lust greed and desire assuming that there are 7 billion people in the world so multiply this by 7 billion times and if you want to win winning is a function of expertise and expertise is a function of action and any successful action and all of you are engineers so i'm using this word function expertise successful action is a function of consistency concentration steadfast endurance and constantly doing the same thing to the extent of monotony 
now a successful action will lead you to expertise and then to winning let me give you an example here i'm sure all of you know prakash padukone 76 77 i am not sure about the uh, badminton situation today only thing i know is anil nawal keeps winning but 76 77 india was nowhere on the badminton map the only person who brought us on the badminton map was prakash padukone and when prakash padukone was winning in india there was a country in the world which was a very small country very little known about anything other than some tourist destinations and it used to produce badminton players which were possibly the best badminton players in the world and the country was indonesia so he actually went to indonesia to find out that what is that they are doing which we are not able to do and he realized the kind of effort which we as indians are putting is not even 35 40% of what indonesians are putting in badminton the kind of skills they bring in the kind of expertise they bring in we don't we are nowhere near that and then he spent 3 4 months there he came back he started training himself and he says that when he was training himself his life was getting up 5 o'clock in the morning getting ready go for a jog come back get ready go for badminton 2 3 hours come back have some rest go back again go and play some badminton for one hour come back have lunch have an hour of rest and then go back and play badminton again for 2 3 hours by the time it's 7 o'clock in the evening he is exhausted so nights were early he says i had no social life and i was not committing myself to any social life his focus was on badminton he wanted to be the best badminton player of the world the all england championship at that time was the best championship to win which i think even today it is he practiced it it took him 3 4 4 years and i think in 1981 finally he won the all england badminton championship it required him 4 years of rigorous effort of the routine which i have told you and the purpose of telling this routine was the discipline which prakash padukone maintained and this discipline gave him the expertise which took him towards winning let me give you another example how many of you play billiards no one so in 1991 or 90 i don't remember exactly there was a player in thailand called james watana james watana a 17 year old or 18 year old boy went to play the biggest billiard championship in uk in 1990 91 he was winning and winning and winning the way if you some some of you remember early 80s boris becker the kind of image he had created so watana was much better in billiards so he was winning every tournament he was going very well suddenly it so happened that and the match was best of 19 frames it was a snooker not billiards so best of 19 frames watana was leading 9-3 almost everybody was watching it was sure that watana was going to win 
So 9.3 became 10.5, 10.8, or maybe 9.8, I'm sorry, 9.8. And Watana finally lost the best of 19 frame game. And please understand, all the journalists just growled him. Watana, what happened to you? How could you lose this match? You were winning. As a young boy, Watana was brutally honest. He said, when I was leading 9-3, I was going to win. So my mind was not on the snooker table. My mind was in the house of Singapore, which I wanted to buy for two million pounds, which I wanted to win by winning this tournament. And my mind was constantly in that house. It never moved out. So when I lost the first game after that, and when it became 9-6, 9-8, I still tried to bring my mind back. My mind, I thought I will be able to come back. And then moment I thought that I was going to bring my mind back to the table for the queue, My mind was full of fear of losing. So I got scared that first of all my mind was there in that house and the second thing was my mind told me that you are going to lose now. So he was constantly at a place where he wanted to win and it was his house and now he was losing that house. So Watana didn't leave it there and that is why the story comes. He came back and he tried to understand why it happened to him. And when he actually, he said that my mind had a mind of its own and that mind had ordered this mind to go from the table to the house and it never came back from that house so this mind control I couldn't do at that time no the most important thing what he did after that he trained his mind he went to monasteries to train that how do I control my mind and controlling this mind he learned from the monks. Three years later, he comes back for the same tournament. He is standing in the queue and there was a big hall in which snooker matches were going on. And you know, the announcer was calling him, calling the people. They were going on the tables, playing their matches. Vadana was about to be called for the next match. He was waiting there. And somebody from outside came and said, James, your father has been shot in Bangkok. And Vadana was like this. He had no reaction on his face. He said, if you want, I can escort you to the airport. The tickets are ready. He said, no. His mind was so focused. He went on the table and played the best snooker of his life. And not only his life, he created a world record. He played 147 points, which in cricket, which all of us understand very well, is like taking 10 wickets in an inning. Watana won. Later on he came to know that 
his father died. Now the point I want to drive is the power of understanding your focus, the power of understanding your failure and the power of managing your failure. Now these are aspects we need to understand ourselves. And if we do that, we will be able to manage our failure. We will be able to manage our success. The most important message in this, when Vatana lost in the earlier phase, Vatana was focusing on the outcome. His mind was he had won. And in the second one, he was focusing on the process. So every step he was focusing on. And that was the difference. Now, whatever discussions we had, let me ask a question. Wherever you want to be, you are CIOs, CXOs, you want to be CEOs, whatever is your desire, in terms of your functional competency, in terms of your management competency. I invite you to rate yourself internally on a scale of 0 to 10. So I give you only 10 seconds for this. Okay. So how many are 9 and 10? How many are Seven and eight. How many are five to seven? And how many are below five? Now let me put this question differently to you. Tell me which profession, in your opinion, rates itself the highest, which is nine and ten? Quick answers. And there is a research on this which I will share with you. Yes? Lawyers. Okay. Any other response? Doctors. Acting. Okay. Surgeon. Doctors. Hmm. What else? Can't hear. Cricketers. Okay. Drivers, teachers, politicians, pilots, politicians, yeah. somebody said that. So the research says that the profession which rates itself the highest in its competence are athletes. They are the people who go and win Olympic gold medal for you. Then comes the priests. And the priest can be any religion. Of course, in the second category, the doctors and lawyers come. Where are engineers? So engineers are somewhere below that. And why? One most important thing which we need to learn is we and those who are not engineers, pardon me for saying this, but those who are doing, let's say, technical jobs, let me put it this way. We focus too much on our left brain, which is our analytical thinking. We do not allow our right brain to think for ourselves, which is what also the point which came out in the earlier discussion. The creative thinking does not get honored over logical thinking. We have, our mind has been trained to think logically. No disruption. Now, this is very important because we 
we need to understand that what are the things we need to do to ourselves who is this person you want to create for yourself you need to question yourself if somebody calls up every day or not how many yesterdays you have tried to prove you were right when it worked when it was not worth it did you say nice things if i said i love my family why did i ignore today and i want to tell you here when you are inspired by some great purpose all your thoughts break their bonds your mind transcends limitations and you find yourself in a new great and wonderful world and i am saying all this because of the negative thoughts which are within us they control us when we start discussing in normal discussion we are have you all have you observed that we are focused on proving ourselves so are we in the business of knowing or are we in the business of showing now these are internal processings which we need to do ourselves so the leadership which we are talking about it's your self awareness the only failure is the failure to try and it is absolute personal responsibility and we need to create a leadership based culture versus victim based culture please remember and again i am coming back to those points which we need to think that how you can be more risk taking how you can manage your failures better how you can build creative thinking and logical thinking the price of discipline is far less than the pain of regret embrace the change of growth just spend a minute here your career is one part of your life please look at the other parts there are eight forms of success let me ask you a question here what is the difference between success and joy anybody wants to try so all of this all in responses are correct but the way we need to understand and interpret it success is a social phenomena you and your society have defined some measurement criteria to define success it is external the joy is something which is internal and based on that if you look at the eight forms of success the inner life the health the family the career the economic life the community life the adventure life and the impact life you need to define your goals into these areas and that will define your success person who catches two rabbits catches none so remember those things which you want to do for yourself and i'm again repeating those points i'm repeating those points of risk taking ability of creative and logical thinking and managing your failure these are the points which came out now do the difficult thing first in the morning can you improve by 1% every day try to keep your mind relaxed you may get better ideas because in the last 30 seconds of your life you will remember the deeds we did not do and the love you did not give everything else will be irrelevant and how do you prepare 
your preparation in the area of see all these competencies which you can see here I am sure you understand this competency but one competency which is slightly different here which is on top can you build courage the risk taking requires courage how do you bring uh, how do you build courage as a skill by getting into those situations which requires more risks which you sh are sure that you can deliver them and start small now building courage as a skill is something which differentiates you because you need to be sure that how you will get differentiated among your qualities as a CIO or a CXO or a CEO what are the qualities in you and all of you have got some quality which differentiates you from others and which are better compared to others what are those qualities and you need to work on them and this slide I have put up only to remind you that whatever you do in your organizations there is an element of organization dynamics you need to manage and as CIOs we have done a very good job of managing the back end of IT which we feel proud of also we have been talking enough of getting integrated with business and managing business we have done educating ourselves into business we have also done a reasonable job we have missed out or we have not done a good job of bringing business to give them exposure of IT so strategically what happened was many of the CIOs and it's since last maybe 12 to 15 years you'll find that business people migrated into IT and they became CIOs this was done organizationally to bring business perspective so CIOs, CIOs while they were busy integrating themselves with business this gap was wide so because of this gap business people started entering into it we did a good job of understanding business requirements but we also had to do a good job of bringing business to IT this was an opportunity or this is an opportunity and what were the issues which were internally challenging us and the biggest one I have put on top is our relationships our relationships with our peers tell me how many of you have gone through a 360 degree evaluation the biggest challenge in a 360 degree evaluation is getting a good feedback from peers getting a rating from your subordinate and your boss is an easy job but tell me how will you become a CEO if your peers don't rate you well and that is the biggest challenge you know in the last interaction it also came out very clearly that business we want business to do certain things we are not in a we are not moved up and said that we want to do this so that the credit comes to us so we talked about relationships communication and communication is something there is so much you talk about communication but it is never enough the top to down communication down to top communication there is so much of gap everywhere the money the self-esteem the career transitions children inability to learn and let me tell you and I turned into a coach and I've been doing coaching for more than five years now what are the CXOs or CEOs getting coaching on where they're getting maximum coaching the maximum coaching they're getting is in the area of conflict resolution 
relationship managing the teams now these are areas which have not been addressed so well so far now you can make a plan work on them or you may need a coach for the aspiring cios you know very well and these traits are common which all have imbibed and internalized over a period of time if you really want to move into a role model cio so look at this and look at this find out your gaps and those gaps what competencies and skills you need to bring in and those competencies how you need to work on the working those areas the those areas expertise will be required in your soft skills technically you have learned enough your contents are good but you need to so let me ask you a question when you make a mistake and you are sitting and standing in front of the board and something has not happened and you are actually you know expecting that somebody is going to fire you and you have to answer something political uh, something which is politically correct something which is factually correct and it makes sense and you know that these all guys what they are thinking what is your body language how do you stand what is your posture that decides you that gives a flavor of your confidence your ability to manage your failures your ability to understand the cultural and the contextual perspective are you able to understand different contexts the context which you have and the context which the board has and this i am not talking only of the board this can be situation of different businesses different and you know i have worked with conglomerates with different businesses so there is to be so many five mds i used to manage so the different mds with different perspectives with their board there was also a discussion on the cios they are of different types and the way i want to categorize them so there are first time cios there are experiential cios and some of them become transformational cios and what are the qualities which a first time cio should get into for get becoming a transformational cio and then again comes this so everything actually decides that the gap between knowing and doing you know so many things how much of it you do and the gap between knowing and doing within you has to be challenged by you and that is what will make you engaged with people so we have so many challenges of people getting not engaged with the company not engaged with themselves and you know in in our uh, in moments of life you will find many times you are in a self pity i should have done this i should have done this i should have done this how do you come out of it and get into positive thinking so i want to ask a few questions and we need to be so when we said that you want to manage yourself there are few questions you need to answer and that is also the reason i wanted some of you to come forward please think if you are smart your brain work quickly they are low on empathy and we all have got used to studying by case methods the case methods again takes you to logical thinking our creativity needs to be understood we need to break our cultural barriers and when we talk about cultural barriers i will give you the example of us and japan us is a typical transactional culture japan and india they are relationship culture 
So the first question to you, do you consider your formal authority as a useful tool but not the primary way you influence others or the key driver of relationships with your people? If you have to rate yourself on 1 to 5, where do you rate yourself? Do you exercise your authority transparently? Making clear what, how and why you do what you do and even share it with others when possible and appropriate. Again rate yourself on 1 to 5. Please make a note if you are rating anywhere in these below 3. And be honest to yourself, nobody will ask you a question. Do you focus more on duties and responsibilities that come with authority than on the personal rights and privileges it provides? Do you avoid creating relationships focused on authority in which think of people merely as instruments to carry out instructions? Now these are behaviors. These are behaviors which decide you, about you as a person. Are you able to create and maintain relationships that are supportive and rich in human connections, but always focused on purpose and goals of the team and the organization? Rate yourself. Do you avoid trying to influence people by making friends of them, creating relationships that are close, which the relationship itself is ultimately more important than work it's meant to accomplish? So many people grow because of relationship, which is what I was talking to you. So do your goal means your numbers which you are telling and your relationships how do you balance it if you don't balance it you will be seen as unfair and being unfair is the most important quality which a CXO develops very fast you think you are somebody is unfair to you please think you are unfair to many people And let me introduce another concept here. There is something which we call universal law. And the universe, in the, one of the laws we say, there is something called law of mirror. And the law of mirror says that what you see in others is actually in you. The problems which you see in others is actually in you. There is another one, law of giving. What you give to others, you give, get it back. There is a law of attraction, which says basically that the birds of the same feather flock together. You attract people with similar qualities. Now, these are just to give you a flavor. When you move to your team, how do you limit culture and capabilities? How do you develop trust? And there is another concept I want to introduce to you here. Let me show you this. Do you people know how the team does its work, recurring events, systems and practices? Do they know, that share the, uh, do they know and share the values, beliefs and expectations that guide how they work together? So you as a leader, what you provide to them as a team and what they expect from you. Do they receive regular feedback as a team and as individuals? Do you review and discuss all these issues regularly with your team? And the next one I want to go to, manage your network. And this is something which you need to do a better job. So when we talked about initially about performance gaps, opportunity gaps, how do we manage our network? So describe the extent to which your relationships are characterized by on the scale of 1 to 5. Now look at this network, I will not go too much into it. Are you in the center of it? When anything happens in your organization, are you the first one to get information? Or are you the last one to get the information? Are you in this? 
So there can be a set of network and you are keeping yourself away because you are the CIO. Do you interact enough with your people? Do they come and tell you the information? Do your peers tell you the information? Do they trust you? And do you consciously and systematically reach out to create and sustain ongoing relationships? Do you actively and consistently seek to understand and support the needs of members your operation, of your operational network? And if any of your answers are three and below, you need to work on it. And they are the ones, all the technology knowledge, all the functional knowledge which we have gathered, they have to be put in practice in our behavior. Remember, leaders are paid to behave properly. They are paid for their behaviors. They are supposed to build cultures. Now let me take a few minutes. That how do we go about it? Assuming that you have identified few areas which, in which you think for individually, each of you have got an area to work which are maybe three and below. And I have taken an example to, you know, just explain this here. The spelling mistake create. So there is a collective commitment of the team. And let me talk of the team. Create a culture of mutual trust and unwavering support. What you are doing for this? We do not listen well to each other. We rather tell each other. We talk behind each other's back. We feel if we have not been consulted, it wasn't a decision. And look at the third column. Collective hidden commitment. The first is that you have said that you do not listen well, you talk behind each other, and if you are not consulted, it's not a decision. The third one says, we are committed to not having to follow anyone's direction. We are committed to winning, even if it means others in the group lose. We are committed to preserving the pleasure of harsh, criticizing and judging each other. And let's talk about individuals now. That was for the team. So if you say that you are committed to managing your emotional state better, what is that you are doing? I let myself feel all the emotion, I react emotionally. I do not ask for help because I think, you know, people will think differently about me if I go and ask for help. If I go and say, no, this job I cannot do, I do this, is, so otherwise, so you think that uh, your image will go like this. So you will take so much on your plate which you can't deliver. Hidden competing commitments. I am committed to being seen as a go-to person. I can't say no and ask for help. And what are the assumptions you are making? Assumptions you are making are, if I were to let my team down when I jeopardize their uh, functions, my team will think I am not dependable. And if I were to let myself down, when I would feel like I am not giving as much, I should be giving. They will think I am not giving enough. Look at the positive side of it. And this is just I have taken as a reference. So, you have taken a first step in the second column and you say, I will share my commitment with others. So, when you are saying that I am not going to ask for help and I am not going to say I cannot do, I am going to ask for help. I will ask them to give me a kind of signal that I can hear and I seek to explicit feedback. And for the success, I am better attuned to them when I am on the path to becoming high strung and I can interrupt the cycle. I have effective ways of interrupting the cycle using physical and de-stressing processes. All of you have heard of VUCA. This is what VUCA is. Now this VUCA, how can this change to this? And this is a process. And that process is identification of individual and team goals. So at an individual level, at the team level, at the organization level, identifying the performance and opportunity gaps and working on them 
together. So the law of two hands, if it is to be, it is up to me. That is the commitment we give to ourselves. With this, I want to do an exercise with you. And what I request the gentleman there is uh, for next maybe five, seven minutes, I request no movements in the room. People at the backstage. And uh, as far as possible, no going out, no coming in. So I invite you people to close your eyes and take three deep breaths. You are focusing on the breath each second. You are focusing on all the challenges which you had and which you have thought of yourself and all the areas in which you wanted to work. Some areas or maybe if possible pick up one area of development of yours internally which is the most critical area for you and if you get that solution you will be very happy joyful you are sitting in an aircraft now the aircraft is landing on the airbase it has stopped you have come out of the aircraft so the line on which the aircraft lies, there is a line on the airport. You come out of the airport slowly and you start and that is the line which is your current age. So whatever is your age. you move back on the same path on foot on which the aircraft came parallel to that line you have moved back you have gone back by five years you have gone back by ten years you have gone back by fifteen years you have gone back by 20 years. You have gone back by 30 years. And now you are back to the point when you were 10 years of age. At 10 years of age, your mind was willing to learn everything. You had immense possibilities. You could learn whatever you wanted to learn. You were so positive about doing anything. You could have reached anywhere in the sky. There was no boundary decided by you. There was nothing which you could not have done. Because the world was yours. That positivity which you had. Pick up that skill which you had at the age of 10 years. 
which can help you in solving your problem of today, the one which you have identified for improvement, one which you had initially identified that this is the skill I want to improve when you started your journey back after coming back from the aircraft. You look at that skill when you were a child, pick up that skill that put both the challenge and the skill together and see that how they can meet together and if you are able to resolve the problem of the challenge which you came back with from the skill which you picked up from you as a child at the age of 10. And once you see that both of them are together and the one getting diffused and those of you who are able to see that their challenges are reducing, reducing, reducing and in some cases they are over. I just want a signal from your finger. The skill at the age of 10 as a child and the challenge which you came back with, put them together and how they are dissolving the challenge. And if you are able to resolve that, just give me an indication by raising your finger, the challenge, the circle of challenge and the circle of skill meet together. And just try to be with the skill and the challenge together, focus on that, focus on both the circles and see and observe them. You are observing them from outside. Anybody who has got the answer to that? One. Take your time. Okay, so now keep your eyes closed. We have got few people who have got their answers. Just give me with a finger how many of them are still thinking that they will be able to get it. Just give me a show of finger so that we can continue it, otherwise we will take a different direction. Okay. Now, all your worries which are there with you, At that point, you as the person of your current age and you as the person who is 10 years old, both of you are walking together back and you are coming back, both of you, to your current age. The path which you are following now has got a huge forest in front of you. Both of you are crossing that forest holding the hand of each other, feeling happy about the balance of your current age and you as a child and bringing all the skills as a child together. On this forest area you are crossing in the forest you see so many things. You see animals, you see birds, you see trees, you see grass, everything. 
you can smell that you can hear that you can feel that you are crossing slowly 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 and all your worries which were there with you with your challenge are slowly slowly moving out of you in the forest and now as you take the next step you have crossed the forest both of you look back and see that the forest is gone all your worries are gone in that forest and now you are moving ahead where there is only a bright sunshine where there is only happiness only joy and you find that the challenge which you came with that has got over that got dissolved and your child the abilities and skills of that child gets inside you and you are moving back on that track of the plane where you walked back now you are walking towards the plane slowly 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 and you have all the skills all the knowledge all the capabilities which you had as a child all the resources and you are moving back and you are coming back to the door of the plane which is your current age and at this current age i invite you to rub your both palms and put it on your eyes and slowly open your eyes thank you how many of you could experience the challenge diminishing so let me tell you this exercise which we did is called timeline and this is we all naturally we had a shortage of time but this timeline actually gives you the energy and the resources of you and the positive thinking which you had as a child and we need to bring in those resources to help ourselves and as a child you were not greedy you were not jealous you were not afraid and you could have done anything and you have come back with those ideas with immense possibilities to do anything which you want and at least the challenge which you carried for some of you you could address them so these are areas in which we need to work as individuals as teams as organizations to identify that what are the possible challenges and how they need to be addressed and how to generate those alternatives i have come to the zero zero thank you all very much